This is Tips from a First Time Boat Builder Part 2. In this part, we start with flipping the boat over and continue with the boat build out. Once you're done building the hull of the boat, you're approximately halfway done. It's quite a milestone. And the next step is to flip the boat over and start working on the interior. If your boat is big enough that it's going to require a trailer, I highly recommend having one by the time you reach this point. I found this used trailer for $400. It had no major structural issues, but was in dire need of being refurbished. This became a mini project of its own, so be prepared if you tackle it the same way. I knew I wanted to at least get new tires and repaint it, but I also decided to get new wheels, hubs, bearings, lights, and a new jack stand. I'm glad I made all these upgrades because it's like new now and I don't have to worry about failure on the road. I mentioned in part one that I worked alone on this project. I had to figure out a way how I was going to get the boat flipped over and get it on the trailer. I decided I'd try and gently roll the boat onto an inflatable bed to cushion it. The horizontal legs of the strong back would cause difficulty in pushing the boat over, so I decided to cut them off on the side that faces the bed. I wondered if cutting the legs would cause the boat to immediately start to fall, but I had a theory, and it was that the size and weight of the boat and its position on the strong back would cause enough counterbalance that it would avoid that, and I was right. The boat stayed where it was at. I gently pulled on the side towards the bed and laid it down. Success, so far. Working near the transom, I tried to push the boat slowly upright. Things went okay, but the bed wasn't wide enough and the boat rolled off the far side and onto the gravel. That caused a few chips in the black paint, but no structural damage. I straightened the boat back onto the bed sprayed the trailer bunks with water to help it slide, and then pushed the boat onto the trailer. It worked out great. I had used some PL Max at the ends of the main strongback 2x4 at the bow and transom. I knew eventually I'd have to cut or pry that board out and remove it. I chose to cut it out. The strongback took some time to build, and it could probably be reused. I don't plan on building another boat anytime soon, so I disassembled it and I saved as many of the screws as I could. No sense in not reusing them. Meanwhile, Olive, my assistant, let me know it was lunchtime. I mixed up some epoxy resin and gave the entire inside two coats, letting it dry between each coat. The days went on, but still another beautiful sunset here in Arizona. After wiping down the inside thoroughly with Total Boat de-waxer and surface prep, I used Total Boat's wet edge topside paint for the interior. I applied two coats of Blue Glow White. Once again, I have no affiliation with Total Boat, but found their products to be available and of good quality. I recommend following their instructions for thinning the paint slightly and apply very thin coats and let it dry thoroughly between coats. I was eager to get the motor mounted. I had originally cut the transom per the plans, but true to Murphy's Law, I had to build back up a portion of the transom with wood, screws, and fiberglass to have the 20-inch long shaft outboard sit at the right height. Drilling holes through a boat's hull is a nerve-wracking thing. I drilled a one-inch hole for a drain plug on the lowest portion of the transom. I thought I might get lucky and avoid screws, but no such luck, as you can see me pointing out what the, bill, what the drill bit had to eat through. It was one and done for that drill bit, but in the end, I inserted a brass insert and things looked good. I started laying in some 1x3 floorboards and I knew the trailer had quite a bit of work still left so I started putting on the side bumpers. At the bow of the boat, 
The siding didn't line up perfectly with the shear clamp, so I decided to trim out that area with 1x3 to hide the imperfection. It turned out looking nice, and it also provides some additional protection to the bow. I had the 1x3 trim stand proud of the siding on both sides and would later cap the entire bow with wood. Here you can see some additional detail as I started finishing out the bow. I wanted to cap the sides with 6 inch wide wood because I wanted to be able to comfortably lean on or even sit on the edge of the boat. I also wanted to pl a place to mount various hardware and accessories. Here you can see I added the second section of flooring and the bow cap. I'm pointing out with the cursor that these side rails are actually made of three different pieces. There's one in the back that's the longest, and then two that are about equal lengths up towards the front. Here's some images showing the detail of the sidewall caps when they've all been trimmed out, screwed on, varnished, and ready to go. I think it came out looking pretty good for a first timer. Things were coming together. I would say I was about 75% done at this point. Another good sunset. The 75% figure was for the boat, of course. I still had some work to do on the trailer. I had to build up a bumper up front so that I could drive the boat up under the trailer and it could bump into it. Keep in mind whether you buy a new trailer or a used trailer, if you build a boat, you're going to have to customize it in some sort of way. It may not be too hard. I was torn between painting and staining the floor planks. I opted for both. I used a non-skid white paint to create this striped effect. This, I think, was one of my best decisions regarding the finish. It came out looking really nice, and I get a lot of compliments on that. Jeff Spira has a good video on the question, should I add flotation to my boat? He points out that a wood and fiberglass boat should technically float on its own, even if swamped, given that there's no other weight in it. Given that passengers should have flotation devices and humans are fairly buoyant as it is, really you only need to compensate for the motor and possibly some other things like a battery. That said, I decided to add flotation into my seats. Now I know a lot of people use seats for storage, which is a smart idea, and I probably went overkill on the flotation. But I just wanted the, the safety level here. This is another product from Total Boat. It's a two-part mix. You have to work quickly with this. After mixing it, you pour it into the cavity of where you want it to expand. This is a closed cell foam, so it won't absorb any water. Once it's cured, it forms tiny little pockets, millions of them, that hold air to create the flotation. Here I've sped the video up about double time. And this foam, you can actually, once it's cured, you can pour more foam on top of the other foam. That's not a problem. Doing so allows you to work in batches. Here's another sped up view of the other seat. You have about 15 minutes until this stuff is fully cured. It doesn't take a lot of time. And after 15 or 20 minutes, you can actually touch this and it feels like it's hard. Jumping ahead in time a little bit, here you can see the foam after a few more minutes. You can see how much it's risen now. And like I said, after only maybe 20 minutes, you can actually touch this stuff. I did this in two pours per seat. According to the specifications, I should now have 600 extra pounds of flotation in my boat. This is what it looks like after the second pour. This stuff is extremely sticky and you'll go through a lot of containers. My assistant, well she wanted no part of that. As parts arrived and time permitted, I started adding hardware. I covered the seat benches and the front cap with fiberglass. Here's a little tip. 
You can use a sander to remove the excess fiberglass after it's dry. Here's how the seats look after I covered the flotation foam. Notice the seat boxes have a slight tapered to them. I thought that would look better than just being a square box. Because I already had enough flotation, I decided to make the front of the boat just a small seat with storage underneath. I used 3 quarter inch plywood for all the benches and on this one I put hinges so that it could be lifted up. All of the benches were covered in fiberglass then an epoxy filler and painted. Although the bench seats were not used for storage they were used for flotation I still have a little space under each bench for some additional storage. Granted, this is on the floor and it could get wet, but nonetheless, it'll help. But things were really coming together and we were only a few sunsets away from getting this thing out on the water. Some days you just felt like laying around. Then there were other days where you're going to go register your boat. Let's go. Down at the Game and Fish Department, she passed with flying colors. As a matter of fact, the inspector was pretty impressed and got some other colleagues to come out and look at the boat. Then she asked if I'd mind if she took a couple pictures of it, and I said no. It was a glorious day, and a couple beers flowed back at the boatyard. After four months of being built, and a couple extra months of unforeseen events, she was finally going in the water. It was a beautiful day. I had all my supplies loaded. Absolutely nothing was going to stop me now. Eventually I made it. I paid the fee and pulled into the park. It was a holiday on a Monday, and most people were packing up to leave the park. The marina's boat ramp was empty, so it was nice I didn't have to rush myself. I had a couple people ask me, how did I know this thing was actually going to float? I just knew it. I just knew that it would. I trusted the design, and I knew many had gone before me. Eventually, the dream became the reality. She slid off of the trailer, and I tied a rope next to the dock. She was floating. Almost immediately, I noticed how high she sat in the water, and I thought, wow, this is going to go really well. When I climbed on board, I was amazed at how stable the boat was. And after just a few minutes of warming up, I let the engine idle us out of the marina. It was a nice, calm, 70-degree day. It was perfect. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to test the stability of the boat and its maneuverability, but I just couldn't stop looking at the scenery as well. I had owned boats before. They had a console with a steering wheel, whereas this one had a tiller steer, and I had never used one, but it was quite easy. I powered up to about 10 miles per hour and started to put her through the motions. The turns were smooth, the acceleration was smooth, the powering down was smooth. So far everything was good. There was no other boats on the lake, so I was trying to find some waves I had to create my own. My motor is only a 9.8 motor. I know this could easily handle a 20 horsepower motor, and I think it can go up to a 40 horse. With just my weight in the back, the gas tank, and the battery, it was hard to get this thing up on plane, but later I found out with a passenger sitting more up front, it will get up on plane with that 9.8 motor. Several of the lakes around here only allow four-stroke engines up to 10 horsepower. The Garmin showed I was able to reach a speed of 14 miles per hour. I did bring two poles and I bought a fishing license the night before online, so I supposed I should do a little fishing. So I found a little cove, it was perfect, and I wasn't upset that the fish decided not to bother me that day. My original vision had turned to reality, 
and I was glad that I was going to have many more days out on the water. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.